Outsider, you have arrived. Please come closer. I have something of the utmost urgency to speak to you about. Do hurry. He doesn't like to be kept waiting. I'm so glad you're here. It's been a while since anyone's visited us, and he's been waiting for someone like yourself to arrive. If you wouldn't mind following me, I'll bring you right to him. I'm sorry. In my excitement, I got ahead of myself. I'm Tree Father Birch, and I have the great fortune of being leader of his people, the Tree Minders. Beyond that gate is our home, Oasis. Why, he is, of course. If you'll just follow me to the pavilion, all will be explained. Excellent. Please, follow me. All will be explained soon. We're very pleased to see you, outsider. We welcome you with outstretched arms. Welcome, outsider. You have no idea how overjoyed I am to see you. Normally, outsiders are forbidden inside Oasis, but he has made an exception. No, I suppose you haven't. In fact, few who live outside of Oasis have. Everything you see around you, from the tallest tree to the smallest blade of grass, is a gift. A gift from him. He's no mere god, my friend. He is the one who grows. He is the one who gives. And he is the one who guides. Thanks to him, the tree minders have a home. I would have preferred that he made the introduction but I understand your hesitation. The Great One is a God Tree. A living, breathing, speaking God Tree. The Tree Minders are blessed to have this being watch over us. We care for this place and keep it safe from those who would seek to exploit it. He gives to us, so we give back to him. It's an arrangement that's worked well for almost two decades. We shun technology and embrace nature. That's the life of a tree minder. Listen, my friend. I will forgive your insolent tone because he has asked to see you. But make no mistake, if you wish to cause trouble here, we have the means to defend ourselves. You have much to learn about patience, my friend. However, you are correct. I will get to the point. As you approached Oasis, he said you were coming, and I was sent out to meet you personally with a request. He wishes to meet with you. You'd be the first outsider to do so in a very long time. Yes person. To meet him, you must undergo the ceremony of purification. Once that's complete, you'll be able to speak to him. Whenever you're ready, we may begin. It's simple, really. You drink the sap from the basin here in the pavilion. The sap will purify your mind and body of anything harmful that could possibly hurt him. I assure you, Nothing harmful will happen to you. Very good. Take your place in front of the basin, and let's begin.
now recite the blessing to ward off any harm the outsider may be carrying before he proceeds to the grove. I bid you depart, agents of destruction, through the power of his divine will. Leave our homes and bodies immediately. Live no longer in them, but pass over into places where you can harm no one. In the name of his frondescence, I call his wrath upon you, so that wherever you may go, you bear it with you. And, diminishing from day to day, you may disappear, except where you serve the health and good purposes of mankind. May no trace of you be found. All this, may he be so good as to grant us, who is to come to judge the living and the dead, and the world by his verdure. Amen. Soon, you will pass peacefully into sleep outside it, and when you awake, you will witness his glory firsthand. Glad to see you're finally awake. I can't believe they made you do that stupid ceremony. <laughs> they listen when I talk, but they don't hear. You know what I mean? Neither have I. Well, I mean, I talked to Herbert, but he never really says anything back. <laughs> Do you, Herbert? He kept growing around me. Maybe for calling him Herbert all the time. His name's really Bob. I think it's funny when I call him Herbert, though. <laughs> well, I suppose you could look at it that way. See, Bob used to ride around on top of my head. Sunk his roots right in there, you know? Well, eventually, he got bigger than me, and then I pretty much ended up inside. It was a long time ago. I tend to lose track. I was exploring some sort of a military base with some other people. I think it was called Mariposa. We were pretty deep inside, and we found some weird vats of this nasty green goo. Right when we were about to leave, I think we were attacked. Last thing I remember before blacking out was something knocking my friend into the stuff. You have no idea how glad I am to hear that. Or we're glad to hear that, me and Bob. I had you brought in here to ask a very simple Favor, would you please kill me? Oh no, 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 no. It wouldn't be murder. You'd be doing me a favor. You see, I've been stuck here for over two decades now, rooted right into the ground. The only friends I've got are Bob and those weirdos out there who think I'm a god. Oh, no, no, don't 
don't worry about them. When you decide to go down there, I'll have a little chat with Birch and the rest of the gang. They usually don't understand a word I say, but I'll make them come around. How to put this? I've been feeling rather spread out lately. I think Bob's kind of shoved my insides around some. <laughs> it's hard to tell where everything is, but it's always that way with one's insides, isn't it? Anyway, I believe Bob's carried some of my organs into his root system. I want you to go underground and destroy my heart. You will? Oh, oh you... You made us so happy. Oh, oh, isn't that right, Bob? Just, just give me a little time to say goodbye to good old Bob, and then I'll be ready. No, no. Herbert is the tree. Bob is his real name, but I call him Herbert because I think it's pretty funny. <laughs> but I'm still in here too. What's left of me? The name's Harold. And I'm telling you, you've got it all wrong. Why else would he have called for an outsider's assistance? The outsider is here to deliver us from our enemies. To keep this place safely locked away from the wasteland, not to exploit us. How can we preach about peace when all you want to do is keep his gift all to ourselves? That's not what he would want. If we allow the spread of this miracle to continue, we're putting him in jeopardy. I can't allow that. I won't allow it. Once again, my husband, we are at an impasse. I suggest we speak to the outsider. Agreed. Why else would the outsider have been allowed into the grove? Perhaps it's a test. Yes, that must be it. I know why you're here, and despite what my wife thinks, I know you'll do what's best for Oasis. After all, he chose you, and he would never want to put us in harm's way. Oh, he's testing you now, just like he tested us. He wants to see if your faith is strong by spinning these incredible stories. Who else but a god could produce all of this? Don't worry, you'll soon see things as I do. Yes, I've been pondering that riddle myself for some time now, and I think I know what he's trying to tell us. The Great One's influence is growing, and soon it will break free of the confines of this secluded veil. We can't allow Oasis to call attention to itself like that. It would be the end of him. I've had enough of your blasphemy! I've tolerated it this long because you're an outsider, but no more! If you wish to test me again, you'll find yourself banished from Oasis. If the same sap that you drank to purify yourself could be applied to his heart, it should stop the spread. I can promise you no harm would come to him. 
That's all I ask of you, outsider. Nothing more, nothing less. I love Birch, but sometimes I think he doesn't see the big picture. The spreading of his influence is not a curse. It's a great miracle, a benefit meant for the entire wasteland. Of course we do. He yearns to share his miracles with the whole world, to give the gift of life back to the dead wasteland. It's upsetting him to no end but Birch can't see the pain it's causing. But now that you're here, I have a feeling the winds are about to change. I heard what my husband wanted you to do. What I propose is an alternative. The same person that created the sap also created this liniment. If you can reach his heart, it will assist him in making his influence increase. Instead of centuries, the wasteland will become green in mere decades. Just imagine how glorious that would be. Branch Tender Cypress at your service. Welcome to our little home. I wish they wouldn't argue so much. It makes everyone uncomfortable. Sure. Here you go. Good luck to you. Goodbye, outsider.
The Great One is dead, slain by your hand. Don't worry, I hold no grudge towards you. You'll have to forgive my people at a time like this, outsider. They aren't used to being so lost. And for once, I don't have the words to help them. Before you reached his heart, he imparted his last words to me. He told me about his will to die and how I mistook this for some mystical sign. How could I have been so blind? How could I have misled all these people? Perhaps, if I would have spent more time getting to know him, things would have turned out different. Even though the Great One has left us, our memories of him will never die. With Bloomseer Poplar's help, I'm confident we can keep Oasis alive and carry on as Treeminders. Go now, outsider. Go, but never forget the gifts the Great One bestowed upon us. <laughs>